Thanks for joining us for this brief recorded session covering just the basics of estimating and measuring energy savings from window film. This will take approximately 14 minutes. The first distinction we will make is whether we're considering estimating or measuring or verifying. Measurement and verification is a term some of you may know. And we will consider as estimating three different examples. One is a back of the envelope calculation rough guess. Another is a what I call a house-made spreadsheet. It could be simple or it could be very complex, uh, but it was made by an organization in order to help sell its products. And the third method of estimating is going to be whole building energy simulation. We'll contrast that with measuring or verifying, and that can be built upon two different subsets. One is a, a sub-metering strategy. We'll go into what we mean by that. And the other is an extrapolation of a smaller data set. That smaller data set could be room air temperatures or temperature of the air and flow of the air through the HVAC or heating, ventilation, and air conditioning system. It could be the temperature and flow of the HVAC coolant or it could be the measurement of some variable equipment such as valves or dampers. First, let's consider the two ways of estimating that is not how EDGE does estimating. Estimating is an important skill to have uh, if you understand what's being estimated. And we do indeed estimate, but not in these two methods. First being back of the envelope. You know, there are rules of thumb out there, for example, your, your HVAC is is 50 to 70 percent, maybe 50 percent of your consumption and 70 percent of your demand. Another rule of thumb might be that your windows account for 30 to 50 percent of your cooling load. Consider that alongside a window film specification that says it reduces solar heat gain by 50 percent, and you can start extrapolating these percentages going well 50% times 30% times 50% on the low end or 70% times 50% times 50% on the high end and you can start to mathematically calculate this seven and a half percent to 17 and a half percent reduction in cooling costs just by multiplying these rules of thumb on on quote the back of the envelope but this doesn't consider winter heating penalty and it also doesn't consider many of the uh, many of the caveats that come in with these rules of thumb, these windows being 30 to 50 percent of the cooling load, well, th that is certainly going to be a different number in, in Phoenix or in Chicago. The second method for estimating that EDGE does not use is, is a house-made spreadsheet. And, as with any simulation or spreadsheet, the, autom the automation can mask what you don't know. You put numbers in, you get numbers out, and you don't need any skill, any energy engineering skill to use a spreadsheet. And that automa automation can mask what you don't know. The other is based on the format and the complexity of the reports and the inputs, the, the, just the appearance of the spreadsheet can promote confidence in its results. When in fact, the results and the automation are still masking that which you don't know. These spreadsheets do not take into account building heating and cooling interactions. In any given building, you could have simultaneous heating and cooling, and a spreadsheet won't take that into account. It won't consider winter heating penalty. That is, when you add film to reduce heat in the summer, in most cases, you also reduce the free heat you would get in the winter and a spreadsheet would not be able to calculate that heating penalty. At the, at the end of the analysis, it's still just a back of the envelope calculation. It can be more sophisticated than just taking 50% times 30% times 50% as the example on the left, but in the, in the end, it's still just a back of the envelope calculation. Contrast that with how EDGE does its estimating. First, unlike most of the industry that is happy to just have four glass types, single pane clear, single pane tinted, double pane clear, double pane tinted, and they extrapolate 
all film to glass combination based on those four generic window types. Edge starts with the International Glazing Database, which has thousands of glass types and thousands of film types, and they, they interplay in this database to give you actual performance of that film on that glass. At times, the glass type isn't available in the database, and so you have to go to a software created by Lawrence Berkeley Labs called Optics. And inside of Optics, you can take any real glass and any real film and use this software to combine them and get the performance of that actual film on actual glass. You can then take the result of that into another Lawrence Berkeley Labs software called Window and bring that in. You can put in the numbers of panes, including the glass, film to glass you just made in optics. You can have single pane, double pane, triple pane. You can have air in the airspace. You can have argon or krypton or any of these noble gases in the airspace. You can choose what kind of frame type it is, how big the window is. You actually construct your window in this software window six. We then take that actual window performance and bring that into our energy simulation, our eQuest energy simulation. This is an example of a, uh, of a hotel that was built in eQuest in order to provide a building shell that significantly resembled the actual hotel. And the, the blue windows you see here have been built using the actual glass type both before and after the application of window film. And now the results that you get out of eQuest, the consumption and the demand and the gas consumption that are broken up by energy system, as well as the monthly utility, both gas and electric, can even be broken down into electric being consumption and demand and gas being just consumption. So our estimation, all of this to show you that our estimation is significantly more detailed and those details are significantly more understandable than a, a spreadsheet or the back of the envelope calculation. Moving away from estimating, let's look at measuring and, and this concept of verifying a difference, a measurement and a verification of the savings due to the application of window film. The, the most easily understood way to measure a difference is, is called sub-metering. You can put a sub electric meter, a, an electric meter that is on a portion of the building or on a system of the building that is only affected by the application of window film. This can be most compelling to the decision makers because they, they see here are two data sets. The only difference is the window film. What's the payback? One of the complications, however, is that it doesn't take into account the year on year weather differences. Let's say in 2015, you submetered the cooling system. You took that data all year, and then 2016, January 1st, you installed all the film and then did it again for another year. Well, what if 2016 was an extraordinarily hot year or cool year or vice versa? So it doesn't take into account that the year-on-year -year weather differences can be significant. So what do you have to do? Well, you have to engineer the weather differences back out because now the difference is not just because of the window film, it's the window film and the weather. And now we're back to a complicated analysis for the decision makers. The next thing is it can take a long time to compare. You can imagine if you have to take data for a year, make the change and data for another year, that's a two year comparison. And that's often too long for most people. And maybe most significantly is in order to do this sub metering of a whole building at the end of that first year, before the second year, you need to install window film on the whole building. And so you've already made the investment in order to do this kind of sub metering measuring and verification. Another type of sub metering strategy can be side by side. Take two adjacent hotel rooms. They face the same direction. They have the same load. They're both empty. You have the same set points. One has window film. One does not. You can sub meter just the air conditioning system on each of those rooms. And that the biggest advantage there is it makes last year's 
weather and this year's weather irrelevant because you're comparing real time in the same weather situation. It can be hard though because actual weather can frustrate your testing. Let's say you plan to do this side by side comparison on the west side in July. But let's say once you get everything set up and you start measuring, it's a, an unusually rainy July. So actual weather can cause you to have to push the testing out until you get a significant load that there's a difference between the two. But it can be a relatively quick experiment if done well and if the, we if the weather cooperates. Another way of measuring something, this isn't like a submeter where you're measuring the thing that's going to change with the application of window film. You're measuring some resultant effect on a smaller scale and extrapolating it to the whole building or the whole elevation. The first extrapolation is just room temperature. You can set up meters that will measure room temperature in two adjacent hotel rooms. It's very simple to set up. It's very expensive. There are some significant limitations of doing that, however, because you, your measurement of the air temperature is affected by whether or not the cooling system is capable of cooling to its set point. What that means is, let's say the cooling system is capable, even with the current high solar load, of achieving its set point of 75 degrees. With the cooling on, applying window film, you would expect it to still be 75 degrees because it is capable of cooling with and without the window film. Let's say it's not capable and it's, it's constantly running and never achieving its set point. You put the film up and it runs less and achieves its set point. Well, what is the savings there? Because in one example, it never stopped running. And so there are some significant limitations here because you're measuring something that you already assumed won't change. And that is the air conditioning system will be able to achieve the set point you have both with and without film. The next one is measuring the air temperature and the air flow of the HVAC system. Again, going back to side by side hotels, you can measure the air temperature and the flow and you can extrapolate from that what the reduction in runtime was and what the reduction in cooling was. Drilling down one more level, you can measure the coolant temperature and flow in that system. And for variable frequency or variable equipment, such as valves or dampers that can have a position somewhere between 0 and 100%, not necessarily off and on, you can measure that position. All of these things then can take you into data measurements that you can extrapolate out to the rest of the system. Any one of these topics is clearly a, a full day of understanding measurement and verification and energy and modeling, but we wanted to give you an opportunity to just hear some of the terms and, and have your interest peaked so that if you want to attend an energy efficiency seminar, maybe you've got enough now to decide whether or not to take the next step. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us at training at programedge.com.